to cut this so that it has three doors and we're going to remove this flap. That cutting has to happen with this open. So you folded it, you were going to cut through the, all of the lines. And I know you're cutting a little bit behind me, but I want all eyes paused and look up here. Once these flaps are cut, you're going to take this one and you're going to cut it off. See where it says remove this flap? You are removing that flap. It gets trimmed off. Trim. And then your foldable looks like this. You have created a title on the from the inside that pops to the outside. Okay, we're gonna start on the note taking on this in about 30 more seconds. So be at a place where you're ready to take notes, whether you're finished with the trimming or not. So Okay, I'd like to see everybody having this laid on their desk. Scissors and glue are out of your hands, but you have something to write with. We are going to open up the flap that says finding slope from what? A graph. This should be somewhat of a review. We've been talking about this for a couple of days. <coughs> when I look inside of our notebooks, you guys already have this that folds out that is finding slope from a graph. We're just going to formalize the notes here a little bit. Please look on the left side. The first step is to mark points where the graph crosses the grid line exactly. So let's look at this line here, because this is the graph. I see one here. I see one here. I see another one here. And remember, a slope is a change in y, that triangle is called a delta. It is a Greek symbol that means change. Change in y over the change in x. We have been calling that the rise over the run. And we can show that visually as rise goes up or down and run goes left or right. In order to do this, you find any point on the graph and you're going to find the distance between the rise and the run from that point and another point. My like third grade brain sees this as I'm, I'm going up in an elevator and then I'm going to walk across the floor and see how far. How far up is this going? One, two, three, and it runs across one. There's also a giant one. If I go from here all the way up to this one, it goes up six and it goes over two. Both of those reduce to three over one. So our slope in this case is equal to three. I'm going to pull this up a little closer. Let's look at our second graph here. Can you find points on the line that cross the grid lines exactly? Yes. It's the whole line. It is the whole line. That's lending me to believe that we've got a slope that we're going to deal with one. Do you see how it crosses at pretty much every single place we go? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to think about this slope isn't the same direction as this one. 
This one, we left no symbol in front of it, implying it's a positive slope. This one's going the other direction, which means it is negative. It's a negative slope. And when I go from one up and one over, I'm only going one up and one over. So my rise is one and my run is one. That means my slope is a negative one. I'm not sure how to, if it's going this direction down, it's negative. Now, I want us, before we go to from an equation, I want us to connect this to what we were doing yesterday with equations. Do you guys remember the equation we talked about? Mm -hmm. Y equals oh, over B. mx plus B. And the M was equal to the slope, and the B was equal to what? The the y-intercept, where the graph is crossing the y-axis. So when I look at this one, where is this one crossing the y-axis? Three. Mm -hmm. Its point would be called 0, 3, because I didn't go left or right, I just went up 3, yes? So the equation for this line is y is equal to 3x, because what's our slope? 3, and so we're going to put that 3 in where the m goes plus 3. This one is y is equal to negative x. Why negative x? Because what's my slope? Negative. What did I do with the 1? I left it invisible. The negative is there to show that we have a negative slope. But because it's a negative 1, I could write it in there, negative 1, x. But we like to leave 1s invisible in math. It's just a shortcut, one less thing to write. And then we need to look here, where does it cross the y-axis? Yeah, so it's plus 2. That leads us to finding slope from an equation. Open this one up, and what do you see? Equations. We see equations. But what equation do you see on the left? Y equals mx plus b. Now, I want you guys to read the very first statement with me out loud. If the equation has what by itself? So let's say that all together. If the equation has by itself, the slope is the number in front of the if the y is not by itself, what do we have to do? The equation first to get y by itself. This goes back to our work with literal equations and 1-4. If it's not solved for y, we need to solve it for y. This one is solved for y. The y is by itself. Is the y by itself here? So let's deal with this one first. And oh my gosh. It is the exact same equation we just put here. Isn't it? Yeah. What's our slope here? Negative. Yeah. M equals negative 1. How do we know that? It's the number that's in front of the x. And in this case, the number in front of the x is an invisible 1 that happens to have what kind of sign in front of it? A negative. If this was a positive 1 slope, it would just say y equals x plus 2. It wouldn't have a negative. It would just be nothing in front of it. And if there's nothing in front of it, we know it's being multiplied by positive 1. Because 1 times anything is itself. 1 times x would be x. Make sense? Okay. Let's look at the second equation. Is the y by itself? No. What's the first thing we want to move then? The 5x, and we're going to keep it together. It's a positive 5x now. How do we move it? Subtract, Subtract it from both sides. That pen I'm using just is not working. I'm switching to a different blue. 
Okay, 5x minus 5x is 0. What does that leave me with? This is where people make mistakes, though, and some of you did this in your test. I saw the negative disappear. You need to make sure that you keep that as negative 2y. Is equal to... Negative 5x plus 30. I could have written it as 30 minus 5x, but I'm looking at this equation over here, and what comes after the equal sign? The mx. The mx. So that's why I moved this to right after the equal sign, just to keep it in the same order. Honestly, it's the same thing either way. This is still the slope. But it's not the slope yet because is the y by itself? No. What do we need to do to get the y by itself? Subtract. Oh, who's saying subtract? Divide by what number? Negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive, positive invisible 1. That's going to leave us with y equals... Is it okay to have a fraction as our slope? Yeah, sure. Because it's rise over yeah. run. I've got negative 5 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative is? That's going to give me 5 over 2x. And then I've got 30 divided by negative 2, which is? Negative 15. What is my slope now? Mm -hmm. M equals 5 over 2. And finally, slope from a table. Honestly, there's a couple ways to do this. One, if you have graph paper, these are ordered pairs. I could go and graph negative three comma zero, three comma one, six comma two. I could draw the line, I could count my rise over run, I could find it that way, yes? But you don't have to do that. If you have a table, you can take ordered pairs in the table and find the difference between them. Sophie, Rob, I'm gonna ask you guys to put that away. Now, the directions from the person I downloaded this from says use arrows on the side of the table to determine how the y value and the x values are changing. Because remember, slope is the change in y over the change in x. So if I go from this to this, what is the difference there? Oh wait, this is, I'm noticing from my work, this is a typo. Change this to zero. It's the only one that's different from the rest. You were right with your answer. What's the difference now? Three. Three. It's going up by three. Is that also going up by three? Is this also going up by three? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's happening here? One. What kind of one? Positive. And then? Another positive one. And then another? Another. Yeah. Oops. Positive one. So the change in y over the change in x. Well, the change in y is 1. The change in x is 3. three. So that's my slope. I love it when there are zeros because it actually makes it really easy. This one right here could have told you that, couldn't it? The rest really just confirmed it. So what's my change in x here? I'm going from 12 to 8. 8 to 4. And 4 to 0. What's happening between negative 7 and negative 3? Negative 3 to 1? Positive 4. Yeah, if you picture a number line, going from negative 3 to positive 1 is going to go up 4, right? Mm -hmm. 
and then from 1 to 5. So my change in y here is positive 4. My change in x is negative 4. What is negative and positive equal? Negative. When I've got positive divided by negative, I get a negative. And what's 4 over 4? So the slope here is negative 1. There is another way to do this. There's a formula called the slope formula, and I will teach that to you later. But for now, this method works, where if you've got a table, you can determine what's happening between the variables that are there. Or not the variables, the numbers that are in the table between y and x. So what questions do you have before we talk about practice work? Um, what is that triangle mean? The triangle is called a delta, and it means change. So if we were going to write this in English, this would be change in y over change in x. It's a shortcut way of writing the word change. Like delta air company? Delta. Mm -hmm. What other questions do you have before we talk about practice? Okay, uh, this is going to get glued into your notebooks, so let's take care of that first. Find this page that we wrote on yesterday, and you're going to glue it to the back. So this will go here on the left side of the next pages. Thank you. 